the Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship. Welcome to those of you who are visiting today. You are always welcome here at First English. And everyone is welcome for coffee and fellowship downstairs in the dining room following worship. Welcome to those also who are joining in worship, listening on the radio this morning, watching today online or in rebroadcast on YouTube and on Faribault Community TV. We are glad that you are also here with us. Just a reminder that First English encourages everyone to wear a mask for worship and all activities, and thank you for your participation and patience and understanding in this time. Later on this morning, we will be presenting faith gifts to our children, so any parents or guardians who haven't yet are reminded to stop in the narthex and pick up the faith gift and presentation words for their child now as we begin worship because you will be needing them later. Sunday school officially begins today, and we will be installing teachers and assistants shortly. If you have any questions or need directions, DJ Chatelaine will be on the second floor of the education wing, right behind the, right behind the sanctuary, and he will answer all of your questions um, and direct you where you need to go. We have very exciting news to share. We are welcoming to First English a new Sunday school music director, Sammy Rivera. Sammy is a vocal education major at St. Olaf College, and we will also be welcoming very soon a new adult choir director, Austin Meyer. Austin is also a vocal education major at St. Olaf. Installation for Sammy and Austin will take place in the coming weeks. And a note to the adult choir members, a letter will be coming out to you soon about plans for the new year of choir, so please stay tuned for that. The ELCA Youth Gathering is on for next summer in Minneapolis, and youth from First English, Christ Lutheran, and Our Saviors will be attending. All current 8th through 12th graders are eligible to attend, and you are invited to a meeting with DJ next Sunday, September 26th at 11 a.m. here at First English to hear more information. The mission focus this month is the Crop Hunger Walk, our yearly mission focus supporting hunger relief around the world through the work of, the, of Church World Service Partners and supporting hunger relief here in Faribault. The Crop Walk is Saturday, October 2nd. You can register to walk and take pledges by picking up a pledge sheet in the church office. If you would rather not walk, you can support the effort by making out a check to First English with Crop Walk in the memo line. Also on that day, if you are hungry, you are invited to support the Crop Walk by stopping by the Fairway Snack Shack next Friday and Saturday for a hot dog or hamburger. Volunteers are also still needed for, to help staff the booth on Saturday, so please talk with Ken Kangas if you are available. Yeah. Pillow cleaning is back at First English this week on Tuesday, September, or on Tuesday, September 28th from 7.30 to 3.30. And flowers this morning are from the funeral services held this past week for Steve Temple. At this time, we will be installing our Sunday school teachers and volunteers. So we invite the Sunday school teachers and assistants who are present to come forward and stand in front of the railing as I call your name. So Carissa Allen, Tegan Embry, Laura Salmon, Tova Selner, Stella Carlin, Megan Parker, and Krisha Schwartz. You are here, please come forward. Thanks, all. In baptism, we are claimed as God's children and made brothers and sisters in Christ. As we live in this baptismal grace, we work together to share Christ's love to teach the faith, and to encourage one another in hope. This morning, we recognize those who serve as teachers and assistants in our education ministry here at First English. The Apostle Paul, himself a leader and teacher of God's word, wrote, We have many parts in the one body, and all these parts have different functions. In the same way, though we are many, we are one body in union with Christ, and we are all joined to each other as different parts of one body. So we are all to use our gifts in accordance with the grace that God has given us. If our gift is to speak God's message, we should do it according to the faith that we have. If it is to serve, we should serve. 
If it is to teach, we should teach. If it is to encourage others, we should do so. So teachers and assistants, I ask you now, are you ready and willing to teach, guide, instruct, and help the children of First English to grow in faith and in knowledge of God's word? Will you seek to be faithful in your responsibilities and will you strive to be signs of God's love and grace to the children and youth that you teach? If so, respond yes with the help of God. I now invite you to turn around and face the congregation. Because people of First English, will you be supportive of the education ministries in this congregation? Will you pray for our teachers and assistants? Will you encourage participation and, insist, and assist them in any way possible? If so, respond together, yes, with the help of God. Yes, yes with the help of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of wisdom and knowledge, Help us to hear your word and to study it diligently. Help us to tell the story of your love through the, lives, through the lives we live, extending your love and care to all we meet. Support all who teach and all who learn. Bless the Sunday School, Catechism, and Confirmation Ministries at First English, that together, young and old, we may grow in your love and know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Let us offer a sign of our thanks and encouragement to all of our teachers and volunteers. I now invite you to stand as we continue worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. Gracious God, have mercy, have mercy on, on us. us. Surrounded by abundance, we think there is never enough. Filled with your gifts, we fail to share what we've been given. Blessed by the wonders of creation, we neglect our work as your stewards. Free us from our sin, O God, and lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves and to love all that you have made. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. We join together in our hymn, All Are Welcome.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition that we, may, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. This morning we are giving gifts to some of our youth to show our support for them and their families and to help them continue to grow in faith by the Holy Spirit. Three-year-olds will be receiving a metal fish as they continue to swim in the waters of their baptism. Four-year-olds receive a prayer book as they grow in their prayer life. Those in kindergarten will be receiving a CD to learn more about God in song and to celebrate their faith with the gift of music. Those first graders receive a spark Bible as they learn more about the stories that build up our faith. And second graders receive a family devotional that they can use to grow further in their faith and to speak about it with their families. As a church community, we are here to help and to give resources, and we understand that faith is foremost influenced and taught by families and adults in our youth's lives. So today, First English gave these gifts first to the parents and guardians of our youth, who will then present the gift to their child. So at this time, I invite the parents and the youth who are receiving gifts today to please stand wherever you are. Wonderful. And along with the gifts, you should have received a piece of paper that has a blessing to it. And so I invite you at this moment to present the gifts to your child now. and then stay, stay standing. Thank you. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for the youth and the families who continue to teach us more about you. Bless these gifts and help them to guide their faith so that they may know more about you, know that they are always loved and forgiven by you, and that you are with them every day of their lives and every day of their journeys. All these things we pray in your name. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Today's first reading is from James, the third and fourth chapters. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but it is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do, you do not have it, so you commit murder, and you covet something and cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly. In order to spend what you get on your pleasures, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will be reading Psalm 103, uh, whole verse by whole verse. Congregation, please read the verses in bold. 
the Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his act to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children. Those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. <laughs> Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you argu arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another, Who was the greatest? Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Be seated. This is the second time that Jesus tells the disciples that he will die in be raised from the dead. It's the third time for Peter, James, and John, who heard it another time from Jesus. No one expects the promised Messiah to redeem Israel through suffering and death. The crucifixion of the Messiah by government forces is not in anyone's definition of success for this mission. Neither was resurrection anything that anyone expected. It was just as incredible and unbelievable, logic-defying and world-changing. If you're a disciple of Jesus and you aren't confused, if you don't have questions, if you don't have doubts, 
you are probably not paying attention or you're deep in denial and or afraid of what all of this means, not only for your teacher, Jesus, but for your nation, your people, and for yourself. And often when we're confronted with things that we don't want to hear, things we don't want to try to understand or to accept, many of us deny, deflect, and ignore. We try to change the subject and talk about something else, anything else. And so on this day, instead of talking about Jesus being betrayed and killed and rising again, some of the disciples start talking about who's the greatest follower of Jesus, who's best prepared to enter God's kingdom. We're not given any specifics about the conversation, but Peter, James, and John were the only three disciples that Jesus had taken up the mountain with him when he was transfigured. And so maybe they're the ones who are arguing. If Peter was claiming the title of greatest because he was the first to call Jesus the Messiah, one of the others must have shot back that Jesus also called Peter Satan in that same conversation. Whoever was arguing Jesus overhears and is not impressed and he has everyone sit down and he starts talking about the meaning of greatness. What greatness meant in the culture of first century Israel was not all that different than what it means in our day. Greatness is based on one's power, accomplishment, fame, wealth, and all the other things that allow a person to do things, to influence people, to make things go your way. But that's not Jesus' definition of greatness. To drive his point home, Jesus scoops up a child and tells them that whoever welcomes a child like this welcomes him and not just him, but the one who sent Jesus into the world. And all of a sudden, Jesus goes from saying something odd and very Jesus-y, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all, to saying something that probably sounded irrational and shocking to the disciples. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me and the one who sent me. In the ancient world, most parents loved their children, of course, but children were at the bottom of the social heap. Their value was in the future when they had grown up and when they could actually do something like take care of their parents or contribute to the family income. In Mark's gospel, children are often sick or disabled. It may sound strange to us because we live in a society and world that idealizes children. But children were no symbols of holiness or innocence or cuteness in the ancient world. More often than not, they were victims of poverty and disease. They were vulnerable, they were dependent, and they were powerless. And so it's something to see Jesus take a child into his arms and bring that little one from the margins into the very center of the world sitting in the lap of the Christ. That child may only be 26 inches tall, have limited vocabulary, be unemployed, have zero net worth, but that little one, that little nobody, is as much of a full-fledged citizen of God's kingdom as his or her parents or anyone else. A beloved daughter or son who doesn't have to wait to grow up to be welcomed or respected in God's kingdom. Because in God's kingdom, greatness is not measured by wealth or power or fame or influence or ability to provide for oneself. Greatness in God's kingdom is measured by things like how much a person shares with others. In God's kingdom, true greatness lies in caring for people who are the most vulnerable, those with little influence or power, those who can't pay you back for the nice things you do to them. Greatness in God's kingdom is measured not by what we take, but by what we give away. Not by the influence we wield for ourselves, 
but by the service that we offer on behalf of others. Not by always being first, but eager to work hard to see others move ahead. And that makes greatness in God's kingdom as difficult for us to learn and to accept and to put into practice as it was for those first disciples. Read ahead a little bit after the story in Mark's gospel and the disciples, do you remember this story? They want to turn away the people who are bringing children to Jesus to have him bless them. They still didn't understand the lesson. That impulse to exclude and to discount is so strong. It's so easy to stay in our patterns of who we are and who we think God is and how we think the world should work. That fear and denial of change is so strong that we continue to try to secure our own control and status and welfare instead of trusting God. Instead of being open to seeing and engaging with people who are different than we are taking care of our own children while often ignoring or not caring for children who don't belong to us. We have to be careful here, of course. Can't come down too hard on the disciples or on ourselves. You can't operate a mission or a society by turning it over to those with the least to offer. Jesus is not advocating here that children be in charge of the church or the government. Jesus is not even lifting up children as moral examples. He is not sentimentalizing their role or place in the world. The point that Jesus seems to be making is that God's values are not our values. However we choose to organize our lives, we have this little child in this story today to remind us that God organizes things otherwise. In this upside-down world and of God that God intends and is building, the most unlikely people are as beloved and as much agents in the mission as anyone else. Those who live in this world below our kneecaps, the ones who are stuck at the end of the line, the ones who always feel like they are always last, they are just as important as any other disciple. And each of us, wherever we live, whatever we do, whoever we know, each one of us is and can be as vulnerable and powerless as a child for all kinds of reasons. It's tempting when we hear this story to think that Jesus is trying to knock down the disciples a couple notches to teach them a lesson about humility. And maybe that's part of what Jesus is doing. But there's more going on here. The presence of that child that day began to cut through the facade that the disciples were trying to put up to protect themselves. Jesus is calling the disciples back to their true selves, inviting them to see the life and blessing that comes not through gathering power, jockeying for position, or any of that, but the life and the blessing that comes by risking vulnerability not through obsessing about accomplishment, but by seeking to serve others. To welcome those who are vulnerable and overlooked and ignored by society reflects the deep love, blessing, and welcome that Jesus has come to offer to the world. To welcome children and to care for those who are suffering and alone not only are signs of God's presence and power for those little ones, But these acts of love have the power to open up to each of us a new way of living, a new way of seeing, a new, deeper understanding of God and our place and purpose in the world. Even when we are afraid and are out of our comfort zone, these small gestures of care and compassion, they have the power to dispel our fears and to begin to increase the assurance and hope in us that Fear and death do not have the last word in this world. 
And they remind us, they remind us, this little child, hopefully, that each one of us is a child still. Vulnerable, powerless, dependent, but beloved by God, welcomed by God, filled with faith each day by the Spirit, called to grow and to serve, to be a blessing, and to always be blessed. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of community, we pray for the church in our community and nation, and for the church around the world. Help us to overcome our divisions and unite us in your mission of love for the sake of the whole world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of creation, we praise you for all that you have made. Awaken in us the desire to care for this world and empower us to support agencies, organizations, and individual efforts to care for land, water, air, and creatures of all kinds. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of every nation, we thank you for the diversity of peoples and cultures. We pray for peace and understanding between nations 
inspire leaders and all of us to listen to one another and work toward peaceful solutions to disagreements. <coughs> Protect the vulnerable, especially children who are hungry or who cannot find safety. Lord, in your mercy. In your prayer. God of comfort and healing, we pray for all who are in need this day, known and unknown to us. Surround these beloved ones with the peace and healing and assurance of your Holy Spirit. We pray especially today for those who are sick and injured, for those with ongoing health concerns, including Chuck Crossfield, Judy Johnson, Diane Larson, and for all those with other needs whom we remember before you now silently. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for the young people of First English in Faribault and around the world. Renew in us your call to welcome the children in our midst. As they grow, fill them with faith, help them to know they are loved, strengthen them and strengthen our commitment to them as a church and as a society. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of salvation, we rejoice in the life you give us. Bless the memories of the loved ones who have gone before us. Comfort those who grieve today. Fill them and all of us with your peace and hope until that day when we stand together in the light of your eternal glory. Lord, in your mercy. Your prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace and love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. You may share a sign of peace with one another.
let us pray together. God, our, God, our provider, provider, we bring you the gifts that, that you have first given us, and with them the offering of our lives. Nourish us with the life that is the one true life, revealed to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered at the Lord's table last week on September 12th, we remembered with thanksgiving that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to his Father in heaven, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this to remember me. And again, after supper, he took a cup of wine, and he blessed it, and he gave it to all who were there, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant. It's a new promise made in my blood and shed for you and for, the holy, and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are now invited to share Holy Communion wherever you are, and hear these words spoken to you as you receive the sacrament. The body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, his peace, his hope, and his love. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, we give you thanks that in this simple meal you have set a banquet for us. Sustain us on the journey and unite us through your Holy Spirit. Strengthen us to care for all of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. And now receive this blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We join in our sending hymn. <laughs> Peace to be the love of Christ. Thanks be to God.